Well, dear Prime Minister Modi, Excellencies, distinguished guests, Namaskar. Um, it is an honor for me to inaugurate this year's Rising a Dialogue and to do so in front of such an extraordinary audience, an audience that includes representatives from across the G20, with whom Italy shares a special responsibility uh, to find solutions to our common global challenges. Uh, with this in mind, well, I would uh, like to take this opportunity to share my appreciation for Prime Minister Modi's hard work on handling a complex presidency and to reiterate uh, Italy's full support to its success. I am told that the name of this international conference comes from Raisina Hill here in Delhi, from which the government is granted a broader view of India's capital city. In troubled times like today, this is, I think, a fitting metaphor of uh, the, vision, the vision that we as leaders, thinkers, civil servants need to adopt. It reminds me of the Palatino, the Campidoglio, and the other hills on which our ancestors founded ancient Rome more than 2,000 years ago, from which an extensive network of roads uh, connected different provinces, leading from the center of the Italian peninsula to very diverse cultures. And I think that it is also the way we need of doing politics today. When I was running for the electoral campaign, um, I said that I didn't want to climb the institutions to gain power. I wanted to climb the institution, for it is the only way that you can have a better view of what is happening and give best solutions. And that is exactly what I see today. As we look at events around us, our identity shapes our field of vision, both as individuals as, and as nations. Identity is shaped deeply by geography. And at the same time, our thoughts could be shaped by provocation. Here I would like to try to interpret an, in a positive way the very interesting question posed by the organizers of, the, of this conference. And I will start from the word provocation, which could uh, certainly be considered as an affront to our sensiti uh, uh, sensitivities, but also as a spur to think in a different way. A challenge to accept the challenges of uncertainty and turbulence of our historic times. This is definitely the era of uncertainty, and at the same time, a period, a period of an unpre unprecedented turbulence. We are in a tempest, and we need to stand tall in considering our common uh, challenges. We need to stand on the hill to take a deep breath and see our lands and seas and their problems in a more enlightened way. We need a lighthouse in the storm. That is why opportunities like events, which risk to be governed only with superficial thoughts and hasty actions. Therefore, let's go back to the fundamental factors, including the geographical one of our identities. And considering some important similarities between 
the wide and profound wealth of the Indian and Italian ancient cultures and contemporary interests. I wonder if one can speak of the concept of peninsularity, which could have a place next to those of insularity and continentality. Italy is deeply European. Our roots and history, they are European. And together with the nation across the continent, we've built Europe's identity through the centuries. Yet all of Italy's long coastlines are bathed in the Mediterranean, the natural environment where the Judaic, Christian, and classic roots of Europe have developed. Geography has shaped our culture. Our outward projection and our growth as civilization. And much like India, the peninsular factor has given us a crucial resource, being both a continental and a maritime nation. A key advantage, making us natural platforms from trade for trade, logistics, and the dissemination of culture and science. For, se for centuries, our maritime flows have looked towards the south and to the rest of the Mediterranean, which remains our national, natural neighbor, and with whom we are continuing to build mutually beneficial relations. This is the spirit enshrined in our vision, also dubbed the Matei plan for the Mediterranean and for all the African continent with its growing population challenges and opportunities. A vast region which has also the resources, starting with energy, which are so crucial for Europe, but which should, first of all, benefit the peoples who are the owners of these commodities. Our obje objectives are simple, ensure, ensuring prosperity, peace, and lasting friendship through collaboration on an equal footing. A collaboration aimed at providing tangible benefits for all, without predatory ambitions, without coercion, economic or, or otherwise. In those first few months of my tenure, I gave priority to developing equal part partnership on common priorities such as energy, and Italy is working to be the bridge connecting the Eastern Mediterranean, Africa, and Europe. Producer countries should benefit from their resources for their own prosperity and stability. Green energy, hydrogen, and electricity will more and more be locally produced for their own citizens and for Europe. Much like the energy transition, the digital transition is also based on connectivity. Data are the energy of our digital societies, and they will flow from India to Europe across the Mediterranean, the Mediterranean and Italy. The Blue Raman project will link the Indo-Pacific to our European economies. In the past, the Alps uh, at our north protected Italy, but they were also the area of connection to the rest of Europe. Likewise, the Mediterranean Sea was for centuries a sort of blind alley, the extreme appendix of the Atlantic Ocean. Human progress and ingenuity, however, made the, pos the impossible possible a change in geography, a passage from the Mediterranean to the Indo-Pacific through the Suez Canal. Today, the Mediterranean is really the sea in the middle, the basin which stands be between the two major maritime spaces of the globe, the Atlantic and the Indo-Pacific. 
Italy, with its peninsula, which lies in the very center of the Mediterranean Sea, continues to be in every way a fully integrated part of the Euro-Atlantic community and of the cultural and political West. But it is more and more projected towards the Indo-Pacific, regaining the history of our maritime republics and of Marco Polo, especially after the opening of the Suez Canal, the laws of, uh, of uh, physics, starting with the communica communicating vessels, are those of trade. The impact of such a shift are hard uh, to exaggerate. 150 years later, as the Indo-Pacific has become a crucial center for gravity for the global economy, 40% of the EU's foreign trade passes through the South China Sea and much more transits through the Indian Ocean. Our two regions are more interconnected, interconnected than ever, ever before. Together, we account for 70% of global trade and the EU has become the biggest investor in the Indo-Pacific, which contributes to th two-thirds of global economic growth. The world's ocean uh, connects us.